What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostivo and it's time for our final battle, week 12, in the Global Battle Association. And we're going to have a rematch for our week 12 battle against San Francisco Giantes, who are closer coached by Jim Leader Geo. So if you would like to check out his channel, why would you have not checked it out before? I don't understand. It'll be in the information in the description. And if you'd like to skip right to the battle, we can do that too. Just check out the description again for that little link. Now, um... I did mix things up a fair bit from the first battle. Uh, he has new Pokemon, and my team's still the same, so I had to mix things up pretty severely. Uh, we're actually going to start at the bottom this time, because this team is a little bit weird. But hey, it's the it's the final battle. Why not go with a little bit of a weirder team? Uh, first up, we have Lantern here. You can see I have Hidden Power, Ground, Volt Switch, Scald, and Ice Beam. Uh, that's just so in case he brings Ditto, it can't come in for free on my lantern every single time. And also Hidden Power Ground gives me a way to hit his own Heliolisk in case that comes in. Uh, I just went with enough speed there, just outspeed max speed Rhyperior in case he goes jolly or something crazy. Uh, Cause I do expect him to bring Rhyperior this time cause he didn't last time. Up next we have Reuniclus going with the Kasib Berry just in case Gengar gets out of hand. I was gonna go Colber but I'm really not that worried about the um, Conkledur or the Umbreon. And so Colbert is a little bit more reliable, in case, he, especially in case he brings Scarf Gengar, because I couldn't really afford to bring Scarf anything this week. Uh, and Future Side is nice just because once the... I don't think he's bringing Umbreon, so once the Bronzong goes down, which I'm sure he's bringing, then I can just throw Future Sights off against his team. Um, yeah, awesome. Swallow is finally going to be the Boom Burst set once again, and this time it's going to do more than just die to a Mew, because there is no Mew, and that's the secret to success. Uh, we only have enough speed there for Gengar. The rest is in HP just to help me live a uh, Mach Punch from a uh, Conkledur, especially if it's Guts boosted or something like that. Golbat is going to be really fun this battle. Um, oh, and in case you didn't notice, by the way, I have Overcoat on my Reuniclus, just in, so I can switch it in on Mungus. But anyways, though, Golbat is going to be really fun this match, just because Brave Bird with 52 attack EVs, even without a positive attack nature, can KO the Conkledur or 2 KO any variant of a Mungus, even if he's max HP, max defense, or something weird like that. Uh, and then just Roost Defog U-Turn, because I have so many things weak to Stealth Rocks. And then finally, Cloyster. With enough speed for uh, zero speed Arcanine. Um, last time I went naive and mixed, and it wasn't enough damage to take out the Salamence. So we're going Adamant, Max Attack, Life Orb, and Icicle Spear, Razor Cell, Shell Smash, Ice Shard, just to have solid neutral coverage against his entire team. Of course, I can't set it up until the Ditto is gone, but that's perfectly fine. And also with this uh, coverage, instead of bringing um, like Rock Blast or something like that. If he does copy my boost, he'll have less coverage against my own team, if that makes sense. So that is the team. We're going to jump right into the battle in just a minute here. Thank you, guys. And we are back. It looks like this is actually going to be a live narration. I've not had the opportunity to offer this before, so hopefully this is something you all enjoy. Um, I haven't really done very many live narrations, but yeah. So we can see that Geo has brought the Heliolus, Ditto, Umbreon, Bronzong, Tapu Fini, and the Salamence. Not having to deal with uh, Conkledur is awesome. Not having to deal with Amoongus, also awesome. Um, it was good that I put Hidden Power Ground on my Lantern, because now I can hit his own Ditto, um, which is pretty nice. Here, I imagine he's either going to start off with the Bronzong or a Heliolus, because Heliolus is the fastest thing he has. Um... Hmm, I think he would expect me to start off with my own Zapdos, so uh, I think my, since he didn't have Amoongus, my Reuniclus is probably the best lead, just because I can hit everything really hard. Because um, I can just lead Reuniclus, and then if he leads with Heliolisk or the Bronzong, I can hit them both pretty hard. Um, hmm. I guess I could also lead with my Zapdos, but that's what I did last time. So I'm not very keen on being predictable here, is the issue. Um, yeah, let's leave Reuniclus. 
because I think he would expect me to leave either Zapdos or my Swallow. Uh, I am happy I, I went ahead and brought Cloyster again though, just because Salamence is too big of a threat. And unless he's Yachty Berry, I can destroy it in a single hit, so. That's always kind of pleasant. Um, oh, he actually decides to lead with off with his Ditto. So I'm actually happy I didn't lead with my Zapdos there, because my own Zapdos would have been kind of annoying to swap into outside of my Lantern. I suppose here I could also... Really? Well, he knows my moveset, number one. I guess I prefer him knowing my moveset on Reuniclus as opposed to anything else, because Reuniclus is kind of the most expendable because he didn't bring things like Conkledur. Like I had just no speed on Reuniclus, for example, without speed. Um, uh, zero speed Conkledur, for example. Things like that. But, uh, yeah. I'm really, I feel like I should just go straight for Shadow Ball here. If he goes for his own Shadow Ball, I had the Kasib Berry, because he didn't even bring his Gengar. Um, alternatively, I could swap into my Swallow, expecting him to go for Shadow Ball. That's a little risky. Let's just go straight for a regular Shadow Ball. His only switch into that is Umbreon, and then I can immediately Focus Blast him afterward, so... Now, um, I'm assuming his Ditto is Scarf, just because 90% of Ditto's are. If it's not Scarf, that could be an issue. But, uh, also if it isn't Scarf, though, then my Swallow can kind of handle it. So he does go out into Umbreon, which is nice. Um, I get a crispy special defense drop. I don't think that matters too much. I can Focus Blast here, but I don't know how much... I don't think it's going to do, like, notable damage or anything like that. Because... We all know how bulky Embryon is. Um, let's just assume he's a normal max Buduff set. And... Minus one Spiduff. Oh, Focus Blast is going to put a Hurting on him. So he might just Protect here. But I think the move is to Focus Blast into Future Sight. Because he'll probably Wish here, or if he has Foul Play, he'll use it. He could also go for Payback. But I'll, I should be slower than Umbreon. I'd imagine. And so Payback won't do as much damage. I'm actually surprised to see Umbreon. Umbreon's a really cool Pokemon on his team, just because of the Cleric and Wish Protect type shenanigans it can do. And synergy-wise, works very well with Tapu Fini. Uh, that being said, though, didn't expect him to bring it against me, because I had two fighting types. But I guess, why would I bring two fighting types against someone with a Tapu Fini? You could always make that argument as well. I do think that it's interesting um, how well Scrappy did last time, because I didn't think he would expect me to bring it since he has the Tapu Fini, uh, and Scrappy did okay last time, but I didn't want to kind of mindlessly fall into that trap again. Also, if Ditto copies Scrappy, Scrappy's weak to his own stab type moves, uh, he gets stab Bray, Bray, uh, Mock Punch, excuse me, with, with Braylon getting Imposter copied as well, so... We want to give him as few of those two tools as possible to use. Now, I would not like a repeat here that I had against Tom with Focus Blast. Even if he swaps out to something, I need Focus Blast to hit. Uh, man, he knows I have Future Sight. That's annoying. I just not thought about that. Because now he, he can kind of predict when the turns where I might use it. Hmm... That's okay, look. We'll, we'll play around it. Here, I'm expecting him to either protect or just go straight off for a dark type attack. Uh, he could also toxic me now that he knows I'm not overcoat. Okay, he does go right out to bronze on. I do manage to hit the focus blast, though, which is nice. He's lefties. Hmm. He's probably just going to set up his rocks, I'd imagine. How much can I... I don't think I can KO him from here with... Uh, with a shadow ball. I'm pretty sure I can't, at least. I'm assuming he's probably some type of mixed defensive build. Yeah, even if he has minimal special defense investment, I can't KO from there. So I think I want to... He's going to set up his rocks, most likely. Is there anything I want to get in before the rocks? Not particularly. Yeah, let's just go straight for another Shadow Ball. Uh... Because I do, I do like the ability to force him into the Umbreon, because I can Shadow Wall and then go for Future Sight yet again. Um, unfortunately, he knows that I don't have any way of recovery, and I am susceptible to Toxic because I have Overcoat. 
which actually with the uh, Pokemon he brought, uh, Max Special Attack, Life Orb, Magikarp set would have been amazing. Uh, I am happy I didn't bring Hippowdon though, because Hippowdon would not have been very much used at all against his squad. Uh, it would have helped a little against the Salamence, but we all saw how Salamence kind of blew back my Hippowdon previously, so. Z moves are a thing. Uh, so let's see, he can set up his rocks here. I could also see him going for a Toxic. Uh, he could outright attack. I don't know. Hey, look at all that speed investment paying off. I get another Spadef drop, which is interesting. Um, right here, I'm actually going to go for Future Sight. Well, he could explode since he got his rocks up. He knows that I'm faster than him, too. Would he save his Bronzong for anything? I guess he could save it for my own Cloyster, but he's at too low HP to do anything about Cloyster, honestly. Hmm. It probably makes the most sense here. I think I can also Focus Blast here in case the Umbreon tries to swap back in. But if I Focus Blast and miss, I'm going to be... Well, I'm going to be doing nothing because I will have missed. Um, hmm. He could also kind of safely go out into Ditto in case I Focus Blast. Let's see. I think here I want to Focus Blast, I think. Let's see, if I Focus Blast and he stays in and I hit, he'll die. It also does neutral damage to the Ditto. Well, not neutral. Ditto will resist it because he's going to turn into Reuniclus. So no, Focus Blast doesn't really make any sense here because I can kind of take him out with anything. I think I'm going to go for Future Sight. Ooh, hey, Umbreon comes in. That's not bad at all. So now, um, that means Focus Blast definitely was the play there. Um, but I got a Future Sight off now, so uh, if he's going to stay in here and get hit by a Focus Blast, that's up to him. But if he swaps out to something to resist the Fighting type move, then uh, it gets hit by a Future Sight. So that's kind of the predicament I wanted to put him in, which is, that's okay. Oh, and he uses the Protect now. I could have swapped out there. Hmm. I have six Focus Blasts left. So I can go for one more Focus Blast as he goes for Wish. Awesome. Future Sight's not going to do anything. He's probably going to go for another... Wah! He's probably going to go for another... Uh... Protect here, I'd imagine. What does that gain him, though? I win. I, I think I win that exchange eventually. He can't really swap out to anything while I have Reuniclus in. Um. How low do I need to get him for my Swallow Boom Burst to do anything to him? Let's see here. Oh man, Boom Burst. Hmm. Boom Burst is not doing enough damage. Hmm. Okay. I think he's just going to protect. That would be the the smarter play, I would think. He can't really risk swapping out into something else. I don't, I don't think he can. I mean, he could try to go out to Bronzong to give the wish, but um, then I would just KO him after he got the wish. So, um, I could also go out into Golbat and Defog on the Protect. That wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Yeah, I'm going to assume he's going to protect and go out to the Golbat. This will give me a chance to get these rocks out of here. I could also U-turn right now as well. Um, I could see him hard swapping into Heliolisk. But if he goes into Heliolisk, Lantern switches in on that thing all day. Hmm. 
I think the important thing is to get rid of the rocks just because it has so many things weak to rocks. Hmm. He might just wish again, honestly. Which I'm okay with if he just wishes again to try to bring something in a little bit more safely. I actually went back and forth between putting Poison Fang and or Toxic on Golbat, but I decided against it because I knew he'd bring Tapu Fini and then Tapu Fini makes everything grounded. As long as Misty Terrain is up, it means to those status effects, so I didn't see myself having a good opportunity to poison things. And plus he could have brought Heal Bell on his Umbreon too. Okay, so he just goes on to the Ditto. Alright, so he knows my Golbat set, but Golbat set is not very useful for him at all. Um, I don't think my own Brave Bird does that much to me. We will check. Yeah, it does around 30%. Um, I could just roost here to see what he does. Or I could, I think he, that's odd that he brought, he must have just wanted to know my moveset, which is probably why he brought Angle about. I mean, ditto, to turn into Golbat. Ah, so many imposters. Hmm. Roost would just let me scout. Or get okay, U-turn. Um, U-turn would allow me to bring in something safely afterwards. Because I could U-turn then go right out to my Zapdos, for example. And that would be pretty nice, I gotta say. So we're just going to U-turn. Oh, he U-turns of his own. That worked out very nicely. So now I get the priority. I am I am happy I made some of these sets with Ditto in mind. I actually wasn't sure if he'd bring Ditto. But uh, not wanting to have too many options against my own team with my own Pokemon. Pretty nice there. Man. He didn't bring the Amoongus to that Reuniclus. Oh, I could have had extra damage on everything by now. That's okay though. I imagine here he's gonna go out to the Bronzong. That makes the most sense to me. And I do have to be careful we want to have Lantern in because I did go with Volt Absorb so he could bring in the Ditto and get the Volt Absorb. But that's what exactly why I have Hidden Power Ground. And I can't imagine he put Hidden Power Ground IVs on his own Ditto. He probably put Hidden Power Grass, I would imagine. I could also see a hidden power, like a rock type scenario or something like that. So he does go out into the Tapu Fini. Perfect. Now I can go out to my Zapdos and bring the pain. I did forego the whole, um, the Volt Switch shenanigans this time because I thought for sure he would bring Rhyperior, but he did not. Um, he doesn't really have a good swap into the Thunderbolt besides the Umbreon. And Umbreon doesn't really mind taking these, I don't think. Let's see. I I don't think Umbreon minds taking these. Oops, that's level 60. That's not, that's not useful. There we go. Oh, wow, yeah. Umbreon doesn't take much of anything from that. So we're going to need to break Umbreon before this battle is over with. I don't think he's staying in with this thing. I'm really gonna have such an easy swap in. Hmm. I could hard switch into my Cloister as he brings in his Umbreon. And then I'm pretty sure I get a free Shell Smash. No, I don't because his Umbreon's at too much HP. So then in that case though, I would just go straight for Icicle Spear. Yeah, because Icicle Spirit does a ton to Umbreon. I don't think he's staying in here. Hmm. I think I'm going to stay in in Thunderbolt so that I'm not over predicting. And then if he does go out into Umbreon, then I just go directly out into my uh, Reuniclus at that point. Because that's a little bit of a safer play, and I manage the HP on my Pokemon a little bit, and that stops him from setting up if he does decide to stay in, so 
Okay, so no, Umbreon does come back in. We do 30%, though. That's not terrible damage. He's probably going to wish here. I know he has wish and protect, so I need to find out what his other moves are. So I'm just going to keep on Thunderbolting to lower his HP a little more as he throws up a wish. And... He's got a... He's probably going to protect here again. Right? He has to. Um, Umbreon. Yeah, foul play against my own Cloister doesn't do that much. So we're going to go straight into Cloister here. Yeah, that's fine. He doesn't do as much. And now I have Cloister in here. We can Icicle Spear pretty safely now. He does not have a swap in outside of the Tapu Fini. And how much is like a defensive Tapu Fini taking? All right, Tapu Fini takes nothing. Excellent. That's that's fantastic. Okay, if I do go for the plus two though, it takes around sixty-five. So no, that's not really reliable. That was a stupid play. Ah, uh, man. Hmm, what do I want to do here then? I feel like Tapu Fini is coming back in. Hmm. Then again though, getting any damage on Tapu Fini is pretty useful. Because I can hit it with a Shell Smash and then go right out into my Golbat. Or I'm not, I'm not going to hit it with a Shell Smash. Hit it with an Icicle Spear and then go back out to Golbat. So I kind of like that play. His Tapu Fini had... It is not... It has leftovers, so... We're going to Icicle Spear. Oh, he just stays in. Oh, he's... He just all plays again. Excellent. I don't mind this at all. Um, I do need to sh save my Cloister, but now he should go for a Wish again, I would imagine. And I think that's a free opportunity to go out into my... Swallow only does... Against the Umbreon. Man, if I had a nickel every time I put level 60 instead of level 50 when I was on the calc. Um, there we go. Alright, I think here I can pretty safely go out in the swallow and then click U-turn. There we go, there's a protect. Alright. Because he doesn't know what type of swallow I am yet either. And because he didn't bring the Gengar, Gutswallow would have been better in this matchup, too. Gah. Alright. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I just U-turn here. I mean, he could protect again. But I'm going to be in a position where I'm slowly whittling this thing. Oh, there's a protect again. And he... Okay, I do like U-turn there, too, because he doesn't get any more information about my Swallow. So we're just going to U-turn again. He really likes to bring in this Umbreon, so since he likes to swap it in so readily, I think I'm going to have to start um, predicting it coming in. I could have predicted it coming in earlier, but... <sighs> These are those, uh, those early morning battles and such. Alright. So we're going to use the opportunity to go right out. He's probably going to wish, I would imagine. So I'm just going to go out to my... Hmm. This is a hell of an impasse of a Pokemon since I didn't bring either of my fighting types. I didn't think he would bring Umbreon though. Hmm. 
think he's definitely gonna wish here. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and arena Clis. And he's gonna protect, so. Yeah, let's just shoot your side as he protects. That way if something does come in, it's not coming in for completely free. So we're gonna get off a of Focus Blast here. And I miss. It was going to happen eventually. Um, what was he trying to pass a wish to? Nothing's really taken too much damage on his team. Um, I'm just going to Shadow Ball here. Or this would have drop, maybe? Nope. I already got it twice, so <laughs> I would not I would have been very surprised if I had gotten it again. But my point was I didn't want to waste my uh, Focus Blast. Darn it, I missed again. Oh man, this might get rough if I run completely out of Focus Blast, that's for sure. I only have three left, and I only need to hit two is the issue. Or he could get a critical hit. Hmm. And with that, I might have actually lost, because I don't have a way to break the Umbreon. So, that's an, that's an issue. I'm just going to Boom Burst now. All the Boom Burst. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to break Umbreon, honestly. I didn't really bring the right tools for it because I was so sure he was going to bring other things. Like even if I had brought Hippowd on, that would have made this easier. Uh, but Umbreon is just really good against the squad that I brought. I keep on right clicking by accident. Yeah, live narrations really aren't my style. I think it would be more entertaining to watch Jim Lee or Geo's live narration than mine. Uh, I don't feel the need to talk unnecessarily during live narration, so there ends up being a lot of dead silence, I suppose, so that's why I don't do them too often. Because a lot of my dialogue is like an inner dialogue type deal. I'm not actually sure what he's thinking about here. I guess he's just calculating the Boom Burst damage. But Umbreon can take Boom Burst pretty easily without Stealth Rocks up. The guy would need a critical hit to do anything major. And even then he can Wish Protect Stall. So. He can't, he certainly can't switch anything in on it. So I'm not really sure what the calc is. I think even Salamence drops to Boom Burst. And I really wanted to go Modest uh, Swallow for Boom Burst, but the uh, the threat of being outrun by Gengar was... It was too darn high, I guess is the right way to say that. But really, if he brought Gengar, I, I think it would have been Scarfed anyway. I don't know. I haven't even decided if I'm going to post this as a live com or not either, or a live commentary. I don't know why I shortened it when I'm just speaking. Because um, then that would force you all to sit through this really, really long battle. And I don't know if I'm about that. I don't know if I'm about that life. We'll see, though. Hey, at least we're not going to get 6 owed. There we go. Uh, so the Bronzon goes down. I really think he could have just stayed in there with his uh, Umbreon. Unless his Umbreon isn't actually Max Bidef. I'm not really sure. Uh, so he comes in with his own Ditto to copy my Swallow. Hmm. I think I can pretty safely go out into my Golbat here. 
just because it's not doing very much against his team, honestly. Like, it can remove the rocks, but since the Bronzong is gone, that's not nearly as important. So we're going to go out in the gold bat. Wow, that did not do nearly enough damage. I thought, for some reason, I thought that was going to blow Golbat back. I should know better than that. Golbat takes those. Um, He has to switch out, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure he does. Otherwise, he's he's got a thing I'm going to roost here. So I think I got a U-turn. Because there's he's just not doing that much damage to me. Why did I think that was going to do so much damage? Was I thinking of my own Swallow, who is holding the Choice Spectacles? I do not know. I really wish Choice Specs were called Choice Spectacles now. Um, he, I'm expecting him, though, to swap out, out into the Umbreon. Uh, he could also do something weird like going to Heliolisk. Wow, Golbat actually took that attack very well. Good job, Golbat. And if he happens to stay in, I could actually just go right out into my, um... If he stays in, I would just go out until... What else would I go out into if he stays in? If he stays in, I U-turn, it doesn't do very much, and then I go out into what? Lantern. I think Lantern is the answer there, because it's the most specially bulky out of what I have left based on HP. Okay. I think I'm okay with that. Let's just make sure, though. Okay, I just typed Kangashkan, because... I don't know if I'm all the way awake yet, I guess it's at the end of the day there. Okay, yeah, so I can go out into my own lantern, I think, if he stays in. Alternatively, just getting damage would be nice. If I roost and he swaps out into something, it would be the Heliolisk, which I could also switch in on my lantern. Uh... So actually, I think Roost might be the better play. Because then that'll allow me to get my HP back here. Okay, so yeah, I'm able to Roost up on the Tapu Fini. Um, Tapu Fini shouldn't be able to do too much to me, honestly. Um, let's see here. My own Golbat versus... I'm sorry, Tapu Fini. I don't think... Last time I copied the least, Bray Burr wasn't really doing anything, so... If he happens to have Ice Beam, how much does that do? That doesn't do very much either. So I think I just want damage on this thing. Just because his only form of recovery is leftovers, so... And if he starts call mining in my face, then I will just U-turn out. Hmm. I'm assuming he's just going to go right for the water type move, I would guess. I have a little bit of speed investment on my Golbat too, so if he's uninvested, I sh well, Golbat naturally outspeeds Tapu Fini. But, like, if he tried to speak reach something, I tried to catch that as well. Man, he didn't bring the Arcanine either, and a lot of my spreads are catered just for Arcanine. <laughs> ah, boy. What a tangled, sticky web we weave. That sounds like a t-shirt. I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. The trick would be illustrating the sticky web so it didn't look really gross. But, you know. I guess you could just have, like, a weird silhouette of Galvantula and Smeargle's eyes, I suppose. 
You can also do what a tangled spider web we weave, and then you could throw a Riados and Araquanid into the mix. That would also be appropriate. Oh. As far as this battle goes, I, I just want to get damage here. Because I'm going to do a round, if he's max defense type build, build, I don't know why I put that weird accent on there. And I'm going to do around 20%. Whereas even if he has Ice Beam, he only does around 20% to me, but I have Roost, and he does not have Reliable Recovery. So I'm pretty sure I win that matchup. I had Taunt on my goal bat before, the, before last night, and then I swapped it for um, Defog. Taunt, mm, Defog was pretty instrumental in this matchup because it has so many things weak to Stealth Rock. But, uh, I don't know, it's tough, because Taunt would have shut down the Embryon. Okay, so he is a Calm Mindset. So we'll get a little bit of damage off here. Oh, so he's not max defense either. That's interesting. And he's faster than me too, which is also interesting. I think I want that slow U-turn into my Zapdos. Even if he has Ice Beam, I don't think... 30%, 38%... Okay, so yeah, at most he's not KOing anything, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna get a nice U-turn off here. And I actually kind of want him to attack here, just because that would stop him from getting more boost. Good. Oh, he doesn't... Oh. And then I get frozen. Um, <laughs> well, Golbat took that really well, but yeah, he doesn't have any special attack investment based on that damage. I was going to U-turn onto my Zapdos and then pressure him, but that won't work anymore. So we're going to try to roost here. Try. Nope, stay frozen. Um, <sighs> crap. Ah, uh, that was very unforeseen, I must say. Oh man, this is this is bad. There's the thaw. Oh my. <laughs> well, that just didn't work out the way I wanted it to, really. Are you paying me back for all those special defense drops early on? Because I don't think those matter that much. I really don't. Whereas that freeze allowed him to grab two more Calm Mind Boosts, and he would have only had one. Hmm. Okay. He has some type of speed investment, though, because he was faster than my goal bat. I might still be able to... Nope. Well, so much for that. Oh, definitely so much for that. I think I've lost, unfortunately. Oh, man. Oh, I'm doing so little damage. Okay. Um, from here, does my Swallow do more, or Resistant Move from Cloyster do more? Cloyster only does around 28% maximum, whereas my Swallow oops, does around 27% maximum. Um... Yeah, I don't think there's much I can really do from here. Jeez, man. Yeah, we gotta go to Swallow and try for the old Flintaroonie. I think that's all I can do is go for the flinch here. Flinch him. Nope, no such luck. Okay. Well... That's going to be a good game, I'm pretty sure, because I don't have anything that can do anything from this point. This was not a good game on my part, I gotta say. There we go. Outside of the Umbreon, I really like this matchup. Uh, 
I just that freeze really uh lost me the the battle here. Unfortunately. Man. Okay. Well, that's how that cookie crumbles. Thank you very much for the battle, Geo. I don't know if I'm going to post this live com or not. I'll figure that out in a little bit. But um yeah. That was a battle and it's now over. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.